Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Kerrville Weekly News Roundup, hosted by the Texas Hill Country Podcast Network. We are your co-hosts and founders of the network today here in the studio, Andrew Gay and Tom Fox. Tom, hello. How are you doing? Great, Andrew. Good. You want to do the survive the yeah survive the apocalypse. You did. We both did. We're both here. Both so, here. Why don't you do the honors as always and, and kick us off with your top news picks for the week, sir? Sure. Sure. I had a couple of water-related stories, although the first one is not directly about water. It is a city council okayed agreement for Nimitz Lake improvements. This was reported by the Kerbal Daily Times, and the city's taken an important step towards providing amenities for a park and surrounding area on Nimitz Lake. They voted four to one with council member Roman Garcia dissenting to approve a memorandum of understanding with a Guadalupe City River Center, rather, for design and construction of a boardwalk, boat launch area, and river trail extension. The Upper Guadalupe River Center is a 503C corporation, and the project would accommodate sailboats, kayaks, paddleboats, et cetera, on Nimitz Lake. McDonald's had donated 1.5 acres of riverfront property to the city back in 2019, which forms the basis of this. I think this is going to be a great addition to our city. I'm not sure how. Much tourism it will drive, but it will certainly drive me. So as in all things, that's what my uh, main concern is. The second story, though, is a little more direct about water. And I think it brings up some of the issues we've touched on. And unfortunately, we're going to have to continue discussion. Andrew, and that's a report in the lead about a Thursday, the Texas Water Symposium, rather, which was held Thursday night this week at Shriner University. It was sponsored by the Hill Country Alliance and Texas Public Radio. And the panel focused on the Edwards Aquifer in general, really less than Kerrville-specific resources. But the underlying theme is a lax regulatory environment could imperil the future of the state's water supply. And this really drives home a theme that I've heard and thought, and as I've learned and researched more about water in West Texas and particularly Kerr County, developers really have the upper hand over everyone in the great state of Texas. And... The problem is more development, of course, means greater water usage and greater loss in our aquifers. And unless there's a sustainable way to replace that water, the aquifers are obviously going to drop. And that's why it's important that we have local control with the Upper Guadalupe River Authority to try and keep and conserve as much water for Kerr County and the city of Kerrville as well. If the Republicans in Austin had their way, they would just take control of everything, bulldoze everything and redevelop without any care or concern about the water usage rates. And that's something that we really need to watch here because this is not the Gulf Coast. This is not rain every day. This is a very different climate and a very different environment. I hope that we can have a broader discussion around this and we can resist any calls for unitization or unilaterally moving decisions about local water usage and rights to Austin, and we can keep some modicum of uh, local control. I just want to also shout out to the Eclipse. I think the number of people who attended it in Kerrville was less than anticipated, but it was still just a fabulous event, mystical, magical, whatever your words might be. And it really was the event of a lifetime. So I'm interested in your thoughts as well. But what uh, news stories interested you, Andrew? Yeah, I got one that I wanted to mention before we talk about the eclipse. And this one was reported by the Community Journal. Uh, It's titled, We the People Group Facing Legal Issues. So as we know, we have a municipal election here locally in Kerrville coming up on May 4th. But this is considered, this is an issue that is concerning one of the political action, one or more of the political action committees here uh, locally. So this is straight from the article in the Hill Country Community Journal. It says, We the People, Liberty in Action is a local Political activist group has been served with a cease and desist letter from legal firm Marziani, Stevens, and Gonzalez, PLLC, regarding distribution of illegal political advertisement as it pertains to their most recent conservative voter guide, endorsing candidates in the city of Kerrville municipal election, and also challenging the legality of the group's operation as a. So, you know, this is, as I think as we get closer to the May 4th municipal elections here locally, we'll see some more of this, but this particular PAC has been around for a while. Most of us that keep up with local politics know who they are. There has been a group that has been formed to counterbalance some of the interest of We the People, Liberty in Action, and that group, uh, I believe, is called Kerrville Forward. 
So they were the ones behind getting the cease and desist order issued to challenge some of the thinking and, and the actions from We the People, Liberty in Action. And I think that it's not by mistake that this is just within a month out that this stuff is happening in our, our city elections here. We got two council people that are up for re-election along with the mayor. Uh, so I think that we'll see more of this as we get closer to May 4th. But there is, I think it's a, it speaks to the importance of local journalism for people like just our local media outlets that are focused on what's going on here in our backyard, not necessarily what's going on in Washington, D.C. And I think that's important. They play an important role in this and keeping us informed um, about facts and about our options and about uh, candidates and their perspectives and their stances on issues that we have here locally. And Tom, you just covered a story that was talking about water and how important that is here and how unique the climate is here. And I think that the only way that we have a say in a lot of that, how that stuff is managed is if we pay attention to what's going on in our local elections. So not to sway one way or the other, just to say that it, I think it's important that we get involved. I think it's more important. I think it's important, more important what goes on locally here versus what's going on in D.C. because it directly impacts those of us that own property here in the county, live here, work here, own businesses here, employ people here, so on and so forth. So I think this is something that we should look out for as far as media outlets reporting on this stuff. And I think that we should all take the time out of our day to read through that and just understand uh, what's at stake in our local elections. So that's really all I had for news stories. But let's talk about the eclipse, Tom. Absolutely. So, so where did I, you see the eclipse, Andrew? Yeah. So we went, we, I was so proud that our plans, because, you know, a lot of times you draw plans in your head and then you try to put them into reality and it doesn't turn out as well as it does, as it, it never it seems to never turn out as well as it, it seems to turn out in your head. But we had a plan for the eclipse. And what we did was rode our bikes earlier in the morning down to the park where everybody was gathering as people were, because we all know that the kind of the two days on the weekend leading up to Monday, we didn't see nearly as many people come into town. Uh, then, but man, Monday morning, people were sh were showing up, just being shoveled off of the interstate straight into the park here downtown. So we rode our bikes from our front door, hooked onto the river trail, rode all the way down through Lewis Hayes Park early in the morning before totality was approaching. And it was just fantastic. It was so cool to see that many people here. I had not seen that many people because there was July 4th. This was some kind of uh, similar type of event where we were having it and the amount of people. Uh, I think, but what was unique about it was there were people on both sides of the bridge. Usually for those types of events, it, it's usually concentrated. The crowd is concentrated on the east side or southeast side of the bridge downtown in Lewis Hayes Park. But this, it was both sides. There were tons of vendors, people just hanging out, enjoying the river. And we knew, it was interesting to see that for the first time because we knew that most of those people were not from here. Uh, you know, for Kerrville River, the July 4th celebration, July 4th on the river and Riverfest and some of those other uh, celebrations and, and gatherings we've had downtown, a lot of those people are like from the area and more or less familiar with it, but this was not that. So that was an awesome experience. We got back to the house. We had plenty of time to jump in our car and drive back down to the park to experience totality there along with everybody else right in front of the main stage. And man, I just, I don't really have words other than spectacular, magical, spiritual. It was all those things wrapped up in one big bundle. So it was everything I could have asked for more. So what about yourself, Tom? I want to go back to Friday and Saturday because my wife and I went out Friday night to try and see the hordes of people and see the packed hotels. And it was neither. And it was interesting. I think Gerville residents just stayed at home and it was some of the lightest traffic I have ever seen here, particularly on a weekend. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I know restaurants were way down, way below what they expected. But as a local, I thought it was great. Yeah. Everybody moved right out of the way for you to have a nice dinner, right? Yeah, exactly. We enjoyed that. But the anticipation certainly grew on Monday. And a friend of mine later in the week said, how far did you go to get to see the eclipse? I said, I opened the back door and I walked to my patio. Now, I had to move my chairs as the sun went across the sky, but that was it. So, yeah, we were really lucky. Obviously, we had some disappointing cloud cover, but for the most part, leading up to totality, we had great views. I got some great pictures. And then we saw, we had about two and a half minutes of totality before cloud cover completely covered up the sun. It was dark, it was cool, it was quiet, and it really was uh, fabulous. So kudos to everybody in the city. EMS was ready. 
first responders were ready. The city was ready. The county was ready. I'm not sure we'll ever have another event like that in Kerrville, but if we do, we're ready. It was just great. And I was really proud of the way the city stepped up, the county stepped up, everybody was ready. And it just, I thought it went off with about as, other than the cloud cover, as well as that could have. Yeah, I agree with you on that, 100%. Uh, you and Beth were covering this weekend, or you got some plans with the fam? Yeah, so this weekend, we're really looking forward to it. So we actually are planning on hitting up one of our local, well, local state parks, Lost Maples. And I got my annual Texas freshwater fishing license. And my fly pole ready to go. So I, we're going to go out there and hike and I'm going to get a little fishing in at the same time. And that will check the box for us as far as recovering. Because I like those nice, peaceful days, especially if the weather's nice. We can get away and just hang out. Then other than that, we're just going to be hanging around with the uh, family. Michelle and I are going to go to a pizza joint we got turned on to that's outside of comfort called Calabria. 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 Yes. I actually, I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's what we okay. call it. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go with that. And yeah. it's only open on Thursday to Saturday, but we're going to go out and check it out. It's supposed to have some great views, great pizza. And since the pizza joint closed in town, that was our date night place uh, because that's what I grew up with in Bryan, Texas. Uh, date night was always the pizza inn. So mm. uh, we're going to go out and try out uh, La Calabria and uh, see if we can get that for our replacement date night venue. Okay, so you said that you guys have not been there yet, right? You're in for a treat. And oh, good. If, it, if the weather's nice and you can sit out on their patio and watch right. the sunset, man, great, well, that's great what times. That's what we're looking forward to. So, All right, Tom, thank you very much uh, for allowing me to uh, jump in with you here for the news this week. And I guess that will conclude us. Thank you guys for tuning in and we'll catch you back here next time.